Over the course of time, many have been hospitalized or cleansed by religious figures due to mental anguish. The question is, is it paranormal or paranoia? Sit back, relax, and understand how this is possible. So we're headed to the Sally House, and this has been on my bucket list for the past 10 years. The Sally House is ideal for spirit attachment because back in the 1990s, one of the tenants in the home experienced spirit attachment, experienced scratches, blackouts, leaving the house, threatening to hurt family members. It became so bad that they eventually left. And these are signs of a spirit attachment. These are symptoms that lead up to a complete possession. I know that this could happen to either of us. And uh, for me, that is something that's kind of hard to accept. Being out of control is something that none of us enjoy. My name is Maria Miller and I'm the tourism director for Visit Atchison and we manage the Sally House. The land for the house actually was acquired in 1866 by Mr. Finney and the house was finished in 1871. Mr. Finney lived in it um, not for very long um, before he passed away. His son became um, a doctor, moved into the house, used it as his office and operating space as well as a living space for his family. So the story that's been long time told is that the doctor lived here with his family. A young mother rushes her daughter, Sally, to the doctor's office and home where she's complaining of stomach pains. So he begins to operate on her before the anesthesia can take full effect. So the little girl's memories of, are of a man trying to hurt her instead of helping her. Um, there is no historical evidence whatsoever of a little girl named Sally existing. But when you look at the timeline of the house, you see um, a lot of Sally's come up, whether it's someone that lived here or families where they saw a little girl named Sally. There was a family that had an imaginary friend named Sally. And then of course the house became really famous in the 90s when the Pickmans lived here. And they'll tell you that they actually saw this little girl and she appeared to them and said her name was Sally. If I'm not mistaken, when the Pickmans lived here, this is where he saw the little girl. I think it was the kitchen. I think it was the hall door right here. So. Is that a rendition of his picture? Um, kind of. So Adam Tillery did this. The Tillery brothers, I don't know if you know who they are. They have Creeps Paranormal. So he um, does illustrations of his nightmares and I asked him to do one of what? Of Sally. And so that's what he came up with. So the doll is kind of interesting. Yeah. He said this was the door that he saw. And he hadn't been into the house. He did that picture for me before he even came into the house. Really? Yeah. I mean, I do, I do feel like there's still a girl too, but I don't know, a lot of people have theories that they don't think it's a little girl, that they think it's whatever this negative thing is and that it yeah. kind of pretends to be this little girl. I don't know. So this is where some of the pacing has happened. Before you got here, I couldn't stop pacing this room, remember guys? Yeah. I was pacing nonstop. I yeah. Don't know if I was waiting for you because I felt bad or if I was just uncomfortable. Right. But I paced nonstop for yep. at least an hour. 
So a lot of the paranormal um, reports mostly started again in the 90s when the Pikmin's here is when it became famous. Um, but several people experience um, items turning on and off in the nursery, toys starting and stopping on their own, moving on their own, balls rolling. Um, we get a lot with flashlights, the mag lights you have to turn. A lot of people talk about a heavy presence upstairs in the master bedroom closet. Um, people have seen a man in the window. We've got a lot of pictures of a man and a woman. Where you're standing, people talk about a woman that paces back and forth, um, almost like if she's waiting for somebody. People do believe there is a strong um, masculine presence, that there is a man. Um, lots of times he's been seen at the bottom of the stairwell. Lots of people have heard footsteps on the stairs and then this little hall walkway here. Um, let's see, so this is the nursery. So this is still where I think the most activity happens, but people might have other theories. That's the little guy that kept going off, the little yellow Oh guy. yeah, yeah, you have to tap his, yeah, so you can see. Him. Yeah, you have to actually tap him. So that requires a little effort. And then this guy too, if you hit. I've had the music box, I think, once before. I think one time I was here with the music box. And then we have footage of the football spinning on its own. Again, mag lights in here. Yeah, do you know if there's like any favorite toys? Um, again, I think the ones that you can touch easily, you're gonna get the most with. And um, we do get a lot with the balls rolling, so a lot of people try to test out different parts of the ground that are uneven sure. to make sure it's not the actual ground. Yeah. So. Yeah, that would be really, really fun to try. I'm just really curious about that one. <laughs> it went off at least three or four times. And they tried everything, stomping, jumping. Yeah. Wow. I think the master bedroom closet is when, I think that's where the negative, whatever the negative thing is, when I think that's where it enters the house. But I always call this one the master bedroom over here. Okay. Plot twist. Plot twist, <laughs> double <laughs> plot twist. <laughs> So if you want to go see how you feel in that closet. I would love to. And that's I feel like thing. I influenced you though now. Hopefully I haven't, but. Does this thing ever play music? What's in there? This little plinkety plank piano. Oh, someone must have put it in there. I don't, I don't think I, no, I, I've never heard it play. Yeah. I just don't like this room. <laughs> of course. Do you have a weird feeling or just the more you talk about it, it affects you? I don't know. There's a little weird feeling right now. Yeah. What do you feel exactly? It's more like just heart beating really fast. Yeah. Not the sinking, just the beating fast. There's one place that we're often scared to go to or don't feel safe or don't find the desire to even <laughs> try it. Yeah. yeah I, f I feel like since you got here, the, the kind of the energy and the mood has kind of shifted because it was, it was very, very calm. Like yeah. you said, like, it's like almost like you're going to your friend's house. If you go into that closet, it's just an incredibly heavy, heavy feeling. And there have been a couple people that I've trusted that have been in the house doing their own investigations where they have felt the same thing up in that closet. Sometimes to the point where they've expressed concern even for other spirits that might be in the house. I think you set intentions when you come into a house. And so I think this house is no exception to that. You know, you just, you, you come in and you know what your intentions are. And I think a lot of it has to do with, with individual people and the dynamics and the mindset and what you're trying to do. I mean, if you're gonna come here and you're just like, oh, I want something, like I wanna just see like something bad in the house, you know? Sure, you're probably gonna get that. I mean, whatever that thing is that may be in here sometimes might come in. But I always just, I know I've said it a bunch of times, but I always just reiterate, I don't think, it's not always here. Like it's not necessarily like the house. Again, I think the master closet is kind of its space. So it's like, I'm gonna come today and I'm gonna come through this master closet. But I think sometimes, it, again, it just depends on the dynamics of the people and who's in the house. So if it sees someone that it feels like it can affect, does it wanna try to do that? Or is it someone where it feels like, oh, this person, I can, I don't know if there's some sort of weakness or, and that's probably not even the right word. That's probably not a good word. I mean, you just feel I don't like know. This house exposes our insecurities. Maybe, maybe it does. I mean, for people to be here and say they get physically ill or they start to cry or get really emotional, I mean, maybe it has a way of playing off of that.
So Zach, right now we're at the Sally House. We're getting ready to do our investigation. Are you ready for this? Of course I am. This is the concept of spirit attachments. We spoke with Maria, and do you remember what she said? Mm -hmm. It's the person, not the house. Whatever happens is a foreshadow, a premonition, an idea that it's us that is at fault. Do you believe that the anxiety and depression that we carry as normal people, you know, join us on an evening like this? I think so. I think it can also increase mixed emotions, honestly. Yeah. You know, when you carry that into a location, when you go into one. I mean, I know that this house has had its share of darkness, of scary times, reports of physical manipulation, mental manipulation, but we don't know what to expect. I mean, usually when we film at a place, we have experiments and we have this huge concept that we're trying to validate and verify or prove. I mean, only thing that I've read before we came here is just Sally is the one that is, scratches people, that yeah. Sally is the one that is the dark entity of this house and stuff. But why would a little girl be here scratching people, you know, when she should already know that that doctor was just trying to help her? Exactly. And even Maria doesn't agree and think that it's just all dark here. But remember, the last thing that she remembered was pain and torture. From a man. From a man. So if stone tape theory and this limestone thing is true, that emotion, that energy, not Sally, that piece of her, that last thought still remains here. Exactly. And that's what would make us feel a certain way or other people feel a certain way. And that's the connection. I don't think it's just Sally though. You know, like she said in the interview, like more than more that I've been in here, like even when we were just walking around filming, we saw the light turn on and off on us. We walked into this building this morning yeah. The radio was on, was and I thought fun. that it was, our first assumption was maybe it was somebody who came in here and cleaned them, they left the radio yeah. on. But Maria even confirmed herself that it's more of an alarm, that they call it, where they leave it on so they know that something is active. That exactly. Night. It was very pure when we walked in. Yeah. It felt like we were at a friend's house or yeah. a family member's house that always gave us such comfort. Until Maria showed up. Exactly. And the whole vibe changed. Yeah. It's the battle of assumptions in this field. but. A spirit, a, a demon, can present itself in many forms of light, many different shapes. I agree. The most common is a little girl. That is what is innocent. That is what draws you in. That is what attaches to us. And that's why we need to be absolutely on our guard, be mentally strong tonight while we're doing our investigation. If something bad really happens, one of us gets scratched, or one of us starts acting out of character, I really think we need to get out of the house for a few minutes. I agree. To ourselves. And scratching is a, a big part of this story. The Pikmins lived here in the 90s and that's all they have is get scratched. Yeah. A TV show called Sightings that came here and they witnessed firsthand the scratches happening yeah. live on camera. There's public domain on YouTube and archive that just has content of that moment. Live on the news, TV shows, I mean, he couldn't escape it. Blackouts, walking down the street, barefoot, in the snow. He said he wanted to kill his wife too. He had those thoughts. Yeah. I and mean, those are signs of spirit attachments. Exactly. And that may not be possession. Yeah. Possession is the extreme case, but he could have had been... stages. Exactly. Stages of spirit attachment, you know? Yes. Yeah, I agree. And I'm just, just, we have to be cautious, guys, that we have to watch out for one another because if it becomes even remotely close to that, if you start getting bad thoughts, you get really tired, you start getting irritable, um, stomach hurting, headache, just, just put your guard down, okay? To us, not the entity. So this is it. We've been wanting to come here for close to a decade. <laughs> this is our, our opportunity. I wanna see what this house is all about. You know, everybody that comes here makes it out to be all evil and, you know, I don't want to say the D word, but demonic and stuff. And I guess we'll find out what happens to us tonight. No matter what we think we know, we don't know. This home had our number. This home knew what our weakness was and they took advantage of it. Zach had this idea about doing a plasma ball 
which was a good idea because at every location we want to do experiments. We want to further push along the story and we want to explore the concept and understand it more than just ghost hunting. We want to know what exactly causes the spirit attachments versus all that stuff you see on TV from other shows or movies. This is how uh, spirit attaches to you. This is how possession happens. We wanted to experience it firsthand. So I'm like, let's use it on an investigation. Sally House is the perfect place. There's a little girl there. There's probably other children there. And if an entity with energy can make that, you know, work, how cool. I'm gonna turn this on. Because I believe that this device, if spirits are truly energy, there we go. I think it's, is it is that though? I don't know. <coughs> Turn that off real quick. One second. So what I've just learned right now about the plasma ball is that it creates an electromagnetic field. The plasma ball is crazy. There we go. Now it stopped. So I'm not sure. So guys, when when a spirit or a human touches it, you can see that it becomes concentrated. Connor, see? Yeah, I can see that. If the hand goes over it. You see more. If that's you, can you stop lighting that up? Can you please stop? Thank you. Can you touch this? Why is it doing that every time I talk? Unfortunately, we're sitting there and we have the REM pod in the middle of the stuffed animals, which I made a circle of. So as Zach turns on the plasma ball, he gets ready to talk. This, the REM pod keeps going off. Okay, hold on. So it's something over there, maybe by that little toy that has a battery in it, because if it's a directional EMF field, as we talked about, directional. I mean, that's the area that that little toy's coming from. Do you find this little ball fascinating? Is it pretty? Every time I talk. That's cool, huh? You like that? Can you touch this? Wow, that, that gives off extremely high electromagnetic fields. Yeah, exactly. This is based on a Tesla device. Which we ended up figuring out that it was only going off because it was causing interference. The plasma ball creates a huge EMF field, which you cannot run both at the same time. And the millimeters face in the doorway, but the antenna is directional. So it's facing out in the hallway, so the plasma ball wasn't affecting it. So unfortunately, we couldn't use that. We were getting no responses. Nothing was going on with the plasma ball. Nash follows me with the spirit box running into the master bedroom. I'm walking in there and I'm like, is Sally here? Sally, are you here? Because I want to know if the story that we're going after, which is Sally and the spirit attachment, if she's the only spirit in this house. So Nash is following me and we go head towards the closet door, which Maria said in her interview, it's the only place in this house she doesn't like going to. She thinks that this is where the spirits were to come out if there was such a thing as a portal. Why is Maria scared of this closet? It's hard to discern which one is radio, you know. We're not gonna really determine it until we actually go back over uh, and editing and review this. Do you want me to go in the closet in here? It said in a minute. Hello? Hi. Why are they scared in this room? Do you like it? What's the matter, bro? Dude, are you? Let me see the camera, bro. To the camera, you're right. Oh my god, what's wrong, dude? It's like, have you ever had vertigo? Yeah, it was like that. Like, as soon as I walked in the door, 
Seriously? Yeah, like I, my knees buckled. Like I almost about fell over if it wouldn't have been for this door jam. So as I walk through the doorway of the closet, Nash freaks out and I'm facing the windows, I'm walking in, so I didn't see what actually happened. We're on night vision. So you can't see anything besides what's on the LCD screen of the camera. So I turn around, I just capture Nash fall into the door. He captures himself in the doorway. I'm like, Nash, are you okay, dude? What's going on? He's like, oh, I have vertigo, dude. He starts acting strange. And at this moment, Nash just goes downhill. Are you okay? Do you need, do you, do you need to sit down? You wanna go downstairs? That was weird. Are you affecting Nash? What's up, Zach? Something's touching my leg. One point during this segment in the children's room, Nash and Connor go into the master bedroom. And I'm in this children's room by myself. And I remember sitting on the edge of the bed. I didn't move. And I felt these little children playing with my pant leg, like touching me and pulling it. And right after that, there's this cold breeze. And I'm like, Nash, get over here and feel this. And he felt it. Feel it. Oh, yeah. Right here. And the fact that he acknowledged that was the beginning of the end. That he was like, yeah, I don't have a lot of experience. I don't know what to look for. I don't know what to feel. But I just acknowledged it. Nash decided to do a spirit box session and ask questions to figure out what spirit or what entity is affecting him or had affected him in the closet doorway. <clears throat> what affected me in there? Who are you? Can you move something in here? You like Zach playing music? Same voice, back to back. What? What, bro? What's I wrong? I swear it is sassling, like, in there. Where? In the, in the bedroom. Who's in the bedroom? Nasha saw you. Stay here. Hello? Are you trying to get me out of that room? Damn, it is cold in here. Do you like that song, kids? Can you play it with me? I know that you're intelligent. I know that you're real. I know that you exist. And that you look just like me. I just can't see you. Can you play music? I'm in the children's room and Nash is next to me. And the, I, I grab the piano and I start playing it. And it's just a little like four key detune arpeggio, you know? And the first note that I hit, I startled Nash. And he looks right at me and I keep playing and he's like, okay, now I understand. And I'm doing this because kids love music. Adults love music. Everyone loves music, it's relatable. And I'm playing and I'm playing and I'm playing, and nothing is really happening. But I look to my right, and Nash is laying down. Come on. You okay? 
what made him lose all of his energy. It almost became childlike, as if I was serenading him to sleep. And when I was done, he was like, okay, nap time. I can't describe it. The story keeps getting progressively weird. It gets crazier, but the best is yet to come. Why didn't Nash get out of here and go downstairs? Nash, you're right. Dude, have you guys noticed though that those toys have not gone off since we have been in here? Are you doing okay, Nash? Yeah. I still feel the cold over there. He's getting the all wiped out treatment, aren't you, Nash? <clears throat> I love it. Still feeling cold over there? Yeah, the temperature's dropping, but you know, it has to do with the fact that we have the heat off. So what would you relate this fatigue to? I have no idea. It just came out of nowhere. What would you relate it to, though? I know it came out of nowhere, but... Something... I don't know. I mean... We had a long day. We were all up early. But, like, we've been on the same schedule pretty much doing this. For a while, and yeah. I haven't had anything like this happen. I go back into the nursery room, and I notice Nash is laying down on the floor, which I thought was really strange. I'm like, dude, like, we're filming right now. Why are you laying down? That's what I was thinking. And as I'm filming him, he sits up, he starts doing weird body movements. He starts acting a little strange. His demeanor starts to change a little bit. Can you see? Good enough. Are we alone in this house? I've heard a lot of stories about this place. Are you making Nash tired on purpose? Can you make a noise? I think this place is a different energy that we're not necessarily used to. It's a very lethargic haunting, um, but nothing's communicating. I mean, we walked in here today, the radio was on. I what happened is they probably had cleaners in here. That's why the music is on. We came up here, the first thing that happens is this little toy goes off. Is it off? Yeah, he turned off. Oh. <laughs> yes, thank you. That's the little guy that kept going off, the little yellow. Oh yeah, yeah, you have to tap his, yeah, so you can see. Him. Yeah, you have to actually tap him. How is it that it reacted then, but not now? Is it because we're looking for it? I mean, you remember what Maria said? Hmm. It comes and goes? It does come and go. That also goes to my assumption that spirits are rechargeable batteries, right? Like, just like us, Nash is tired, but tomorrow he's going to be rested. Nash, why don't you get up and go ahead down the stairs? Let's go downstairs. Nash needs to get out of here, out of the room. Do you feel threatened, Nash? No. Do you, are you fully aware of your scenario? Yeah. I think he's okay. I mean, I kind of feel, I don't know, just to how it affected me when I walked in that closet, I kind of scared the shit out of me. And, and I was in here, what exactly happened to you? It was just like a vertical feeling, like I literally almost just fell over, like my knees buckled out. Really? Yeah, like I just, everything just went limp. The closet or the master bedroom? And walking into the closet. Wow. Connor was in the closet and I was walking in to follow him. And do you think that's why Maria decided not to go in there? As soon as, as, soon as I hit the doorway, 
like as soon as I walk through that that threshold in between the bedroom and the closet. It's like, have you ever had vertigo? Yeah. It was like that, like as soon as I walked in this door. Is that something that happens to you often? No, never. That's never happened to you? No. Do you think something at that moment threw you off and drained your energy? Because you came in here and laid down. I don't, know how to, I don't know how else to explain it. Like, I'm never usually that person that, you know, goes instantly paranormal, but I can't explain what happened there. He almost fell forward. Did he? Did you have to catch him? No, he, the, the side of the wall caught him before oh, I even got a chance to realize what happened. Can you close one of the doors? So we're all in the nursery room. I'm sitting down on the bed. Nash is up against the wall. His demeanor is still falling apart. And Zach decides he could go into the master bedroom to go in that closet area to see if he's able to capture any activity because Nash just experienced vertigo. So I'm sitting there on the bed and I'm like, Nash, I'm gonna go downstairs. Because at this point, I'm just like, there's not much activity that we're seeing right now besides the weirdness going on with Nash. I'm going downstairs, Nash. And Nash doesn't respond to me. He's emotionless. Are you okay? Nash? Mm. You all right? I get up and I go in the hallway and I'm standing out there in the hallway and I decide to stop to film him and be in between so I can see what Zach's doing, so I can see what Nash is doing. Nash. I hear Connor say Nash and I go out there and Nash is just looking off into dead space. And we try to get his attention. What's on your mind, Nash? Nash. Mm. Dude, what's wrong, bro? You're right. You're like falling asleep over there. Are you okay? What, what's the last thing you remember? Nash. Connor, why did you leave the room? Huh? Why did you leave the room? I'm standing out here filming you, bro. Why did you leave the room? Nash doesn't respond. He snaps out of it after the last time we ask him, Nash. And he, he freaks out. He's, he says, Connor, why did you leave the room? When did you leave the room? I'm right here standing and looking at you. I can see you. He left like two minutes ago. Did you feel him next to you the whole time? That's the last thing I remember is him sitting here next to him. Yeah, so you, you don't need, remember you, the last two minutes. Yeah. Give me your hand. Give me your hand. Leave that ship there. You need to get him out of here. Give me your hand. Right then, this entire investigation changed. Let's go. You're getting out of this room and you're going downstairs. Let's go. Like I said five minutes ago, go downstairs, please. Whoa, hold on. Hold him. You're right? Huh? Yeah. You sure? Dude, you are like a weight, bro. So we're going down the stairs and Nash is like a weight. Like he's, he's just like a dead body. I'm carrying him down the stairs. I sit him down on the couch and we're trying to figure out what's going on with Nash. What is he thinking? Because this is something throughout all the years of doing paranormal investigations that I've never experienced myself. I've never witnessed someone come to the signs of a spirit attachment. Come on, sit down on the couch over here. Dude, what's, what, what, what happened up there? You were sitting next to me and I just said, hey Nash, I'm gonna step outside the room real quick here and, and you just said, mm-hmm. You didn't like, you, seriously bro, the seriousness, what's going on? I don't know, there was just like, you were there and 
and there was a high pitch ringing, and then you guys were yelling at me to wake up. A high pitch ringing? That's... Wow. It was just like a fuzzy high pitch. Just like static almost? Yeah. Was it like a whistle or like a siren? Yes. Is there anything that you can relate it to? Did you, was it just like a trance state almost? Like a fuzz, like, yeah. Like a spirit box? Yeah. I don't know if I just sat there the whole time. I don't know if I was doing stuff. I don't remember anything. Do you know where you're at? Yeah. Something is affecting Nash. Do you want to step out of the house? Come on, let's go. Let's get out of the house real quick here, man. You need to step out of the house for a few minutes. <clears throat> so, Bro. And this is uh. What the f is going on? Spirit Dude. attachment, man. Dude, I, was, I was just sitting next to Nash. Spirit attachment. I was just sitting next to Nash. And I was talking to him. And I stepped out of the room because I said, I'm gonna go downstairs, Nash. Let's go. And I, I stood, I literally was only outside for like a few moments. And I'm, I'm hearing you in the master bedroom and I'm filming him or whatever. And he's just sitting there I'm like, Nash. You wanna hear something? And I, I find it very weird. I went in to the closet and I closed the door and I said, are there any children here? And I sat there for about a minute, right? When I go outside of that closet, and at that time, Nash was already in a trance. Nash? <clears throat> Nash is across the street right now, and this camera ain't focused on him. He's a little across the street. Are you okay? Yeah? No? Right now I am inside the Sally house. It's been a slow start except for one of the biggest things just happened and Nash was affected. Are you okay right here? Are you okay right here? You sure? Hey. Don't cross the street until, I, until you tell me. I'm serious. Don't cross the street. Hear me? Yeah. So we're trying to figure out what is going on. Nash is someone that needs to be in control. He's very independent and he's a leader, a natural born leader. He's outside. It went from fun, loving, almost childlike and innocent to attachment on one of our friends. You feeling better? I like this place, dude. Huh? Like place. What were you talking to? Okay. What were you telling her? Yeah. Stand here for a minute. So wh what did you describe? This. I gotta get this, I gotta document this. What, just tell me everything. I just, that I just started feeling drained and I was calling Connor around the house and I went into the master bedroom with him and followed him into the closet and it was like a wall I walked into. It was just like a vertigo wall. And I had to catch myself from falling. Went back into the nursery, laid down on the floor for a little bit and then the next thing I remember is you guys basically yelling at me to snap out of it to wake yeah. up um i'm gonna tell you something i went into that closet and the time that i was in there was the time that you were in a trance and i asked if there were any children here so what this event has done is caused connor to explode he is in there provoking he's defending you he's standing up for you you hear him he's not happy I'm not the type of person that goes into locations that just taunts and says, come out here and show yourself, blah, blah, blah. 
but something just overcame me and I walk through the house and I get aggressive and Zach is outside filming Nash, making sure he doesn't cross the road. Nash gets off the phone, crosses the road safely, and Zach's like, okay, tell me what's going on. What are you feeling? I know that you're a very structured, independent person, right? You, you love being in control. You like knowing that you are safe at all times. What does this do to you? It takes me out of that. I don't like it. I don't like it's it. one of your biggest fears, isn't it? Yeah. That's one of the reasons I don't drink. That's this place exposed you. It knows that you're like that. There's places that do that. Are you in control right now? Yeah. Do you feel better? Yeah. Are you ready to go in the Sally house? Yes. Spirit attachment. It's where a human or inhuman spirit latches on to the living. Whether it's depression, anxiety, or drug addiction, it is believed that those that suffer with that experience this phenomenon. Whether this be true or not, this concept, this idea is extremely subjective and risky. Spirit possession is the belief that demons, gods, objects, or spirits can overcome our body and mind. This concept has existed in Christian, Buddhism, Haitian, Voodoo, Wicca. I could speak for hours on the traditions and beliefs involving these regions of the world. Possession isn't always malevolent, but there's a great contrast. You stand alone in church, your arms raised, and God fills your heart. As the devil's advocate, you lay down. You become coddled by fear, and darkness consumes who you once were. This is only from a religious standpoint. If the universe is your God, or God has never been, listen carefully. The essence of sage burning, healing crystals, and spiritual blessings exists within this realm of possession. We as a society have turned to religion or occult practices to rid unwanted entities from our lives. Unfortunately, it isn't always enough. Exorcisms, the most common and well-known technique in our culture to cast out evil. Our story didn't become that, nor did an exorcism take place. It's extremely rare that scenarios get to that point. Many factors could have caused Nash to react the way he did, but let me offer this. Let's speak of what's familiar, Catholicism. I'm reminded of exorcisms and how they handle the ordeal. The Catholic exorcists believe in a six-step process that makes perfect sense if you absorb it. One, subjection. When a person willingly submits to Satan. Two, infestation, affecting your house, things, or animals. Three, external pain caused by an evil entity. Four, oppression, no loss of consciousness or involuntary action. Five, obsession, which includes attacks and obsessive negative thoughts. Six, possession, which demons take your body without your consent. This may seem like a lot, but let me simplify it. As author Malachi Martin said, the possessing spirit is seeking to come and live with the subject. If accepted, the spirit becomes the constant and continuously present companion of the possessed. Things have returned to normal and we're still standing. 